Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. It's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler here, and I'm going to continue my current fad of sorting out and dealing with e-waste. I've just got to make some room, and I've got stacks of it lying around, plus it keeps coming in. So in this episode, we'll continue dealing with the stack we had recently, and we have a vintage Philips CD player. I think it's probably in the 1990s sometime. I will check that out. I don't know if it works. I've never got a power cord for it. Well, at least one didn't come with it. I don't have a remote. I'm not sure if it's supposed to have one. Um, I can find a cord. We'll test it out. And this video may be a repair. If it doesn't work properly, we'll have a go at repairing it. Or if it works fine, we'll just clean it up and work out a price. Perhaps we could eBay it. And I also have another stack here. Let me show you this. Here's a few units I pulled out of the storeroom at the shop. They get dropped off all the time for e-waste. And I've, I knew that these combination DVD V hs players were quite sought after and i did a, a very quick browse on ebay this panasonic one down here they were selling from anywhere from a hundred dollars up to five hundred dollars second hand uh, the samsung the lg were getting around a hundred give or take 50 bucks sometimes even more uh, standard sony vhs player there but or vcr even those were bringing 50 plus so I may well eBay them. We'll see how they go. We'll go through and check them all out. Um, if they work and test fine, I'll just give them a clean up. If they're not working properly, we'll have a go at fixing them. I'm by no means an electronics expert. In fact, half the time I'm flying blind and we work things out as we go. That's just quite a modern LG uh, home theater amplifier thing. It's Look, I'm only probably going to put $20 on that. It does actually work and it will sell for a shed radio or something. The amplifier works, and I'll use it to test the CD player. A couple of cheap little surround sound speakers here that are handy just for testing. So, yeah, I'm enjoying the journey of learning as we go. Hopefully you guys are as well. And uh, I get often a lot of very constructive comments and helpful tips and things to look out for and what I may have done either right or wrong. And, uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to read the comments because you can sure learn a lot from them. So start off with this video let's test out this Philips CD player it's a CD 480 and I'll just check out see if I can find out how old it is and we'll hook it all up and see if we can play a CD okay I've plugged it into the amp down below um, and we'll turn the power on to it and I did check out online and oh it says 10 has it got might still have a CD in it might be 10 tracks on it uh, the Radio Museum website tells me that it's 1989, so it's getting back a bit. Um, I couldn't find any completed items, so I don't know, on eBay that is, so I don't know if it's worth eBaying, but often if you can't find anything on there, it's a good sign. Why is the door not opening? Uh, I think it's trying. I'd suggest the belt's probably perished or broken. Uh, there we go, we can... Ah, oh, there is a CD in there. Excellent. Now that came out, it felt like the belt was still driving, but just slipping. Uh, what have we got here? Hawaiian love songs. Okay, I think we'll give that one a miss. But it might be an interesting test CD. Now... Will that go in and out on its own? Maybe that's a fault that it has, and maybe that's the only fault. Well, it went in. And I can hear the motor buzzing, so it's not opening. But we... And now I can't get it to open at all. It moves a little bit. Yeah, we're going to have to take the cover off. Definitely a fault, so we'll try and fix that. It looks like the laser's okay because it read that the CD had 10 tracks. We probably should have tried to play it, but it doesn't matter. We've got to fix the door anyway. So let's power it off, and we'll unplug the mains cord, and we'll open it up and see if we can find out what's gone wrong with the door. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, that's the only problem with it. Okay, mains plugs out. RCA plugs are out. Let's make some room on the bench and open her up. Okay, we just have two screws each end by the looks of it. Now, I was mentioning... Oh, what do we got? Torx bits. 
Okay. They're going to play hard to get, are they? Ah, uh, yes, they're normal Torx bits. I thought they might have been security ones. So we'll get them out pretty quick. Now, I was mentioning reading the comments, and I had a handy comment just before from Steve, from Steve's Electronic Repair Shop. He has a, a fairly interesting channel where he does a lot of uh, inspections and repairs and and uh, that sort of stuff on all sorts of electronics. Much more knowledgeable than myself. In fact, he worked in the game, whereas I'm just a, a hobbyist that thinks he knows a bit of stuff. And anyway, Steve suggested that the NEC VHS that we cleaned the mode switch on. He said because the cover oil is off, it's a fair chance that the light was mucking up the end of tape sensors, which work on light sensors. So having the cover off could well have caused a lot of our problems. But anyway, we worked out and we learned how to clean a mode switch, which certainly wouldn't have done any harm. Why won't they come out? So that's something to be aware of when you have the cover off these things, you can actually sometimes trigger sensors. There we go. Alright, oh, she's a pretty simple unit. Nice chunky transformer, but if you're scrapping the thing, that's about all the value you're going to get. Big transformer, fairly plain board, but it's got some massive big IC chips on it. It's uh, a nice copper colour, which is, you know, quite vintage looking, but really there's not much in it, actually. Uh, here's the drive belt for the door. It's not broken. Maybe it's slipping. I don't know. We might... Um, try and operate it with the lid off and see if we can see what's going on. So before I finish that other train of thought, I should thank Steve very much for his input and for watching my videos, and he's been helpful um, on previous occasions as well, so that's fantastic. What's going on here? Oh, I guess I should turn the power on. That will help. Right. Okay. Our disc sensor thing was spinning, our motor. Let's see what happens when we go to open the door. I think it's just slipping on the belt. Yeah, the motor spindle is spinning, but the belt's not moving. So if I manually operate this, that works. There we go, I think the belt's just slipping takes it in fine, but it needs a help to get it started. There we go. And back in. But before we go any further, we need to work out if the rest of it's okay. There's no sense mucking around with changing belts and checking sensors if there's other issues. So let's put our Hawaiian Love Songs Disc 1 into the uh, machine and see if we can get it to play. Now I said earlier the laser seemed to pick up how many tracks, it says 10 again, it's probably just out of shot of the camera. Um, so that's a good sign, let's press play. I think I have the amplifier on. Well there we go, wasn't that riveting music, it certainly sounds Hawaiian. That sounds good, uh, and the stop button worked. It read the um, CD straight away and seemed to play nicely and clearly. So I'll just, actually I've got another CD, let's try a different one. A little bit better here, we've got Bop Till You Drop, some good old rock and roll. We can't play very much of it. Now we need to get this CD to come out. There we go. And we'll see how this one sounds. Play. That was good. We should see if it skips to the next track, okay? Second track. Next track. Alright, that's about all we can play, but that's sounding very good, everything seems to work. Let's have a look at replacing this belt and see if we can fix the tray coming um, out. Oh, it nearly worked. So maybe me just playing with it is actually, um, because the belt's starting to run again, maybe it's grabbing a bit more 
of the pulley. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's, it's trying. All right, I reckon a new belt's going to fix it. I probably don't have a new one, but I'll see if I've got a better one than this. This must be stretched a little bit. To get it off, I think we need to take the front panel off because we need to get the tray out and there's some stops at the back of the tray and we need to access this pulley in here to be able to slip the belt off. A little bit of a closer view here for you. We can see that we could slip the belt off the pulley very easily, but we can't get it off this one because the gear at the bottom of it runs on the bottom of the tray so we need to remove the tray then we can just slip it off that pulley as well and to remove the tray i'm pretty sure we need to re remove the front panel the front panel has a torque screw each end at the top and i think just plastic clips underneath and it should just come straight off i don't think there's going to be anything connected to it uh the oh the panel will come off we might have to unplug the wires or perhaps we don't have to unplug the wires. Maybe it'll just flex out of the road. Okay, these plastic clips, we don't want to break them. Oh, is there any screws on the ends? No. So it should be just these clips. Certainly don't want to flex them too hard and break them. The middle one looks like it's clear. Looks like we have a trouble with our pads too. We might have to cut some new feet for it. They just felt pads. One of them's missing this end. Oh, it's a bit stressing. I don't want to break the clip, so I have to ease it out carefully. Oh, there's another screw in the middle. Should have noticed that one. Now the panel might, yeah, that's going to be better. Now the clips will come off. So this was pretty tricky. I managed to lever it off. I didn't break the clip, luckily, but you kind of need to pry the whole panel from the top to give you enough room to move these clips. The middle one was fine. And this end, now that we've got the panel on an angle, should come off okay. You've just got to be so careful with vintage plastic. It breaks sometimes just when you look at it. Okay, success, good. So hopefully you're back in field of view with those clips all undone. Oh, one of them's clipped, clipped itself back on, damn it. There we go. That was a little stressful. So I don't think we need to unplug any of the wires now. We should be able to get the tray to slide past where the pulley drives. Oh, something else catching. Oh, we can take this top section right off. I'll just have a spring this end. And that will lift out. Good. Okay. Well, that's a little messy, but we have got the tray out. Doesn't it fit through the door? Okay, eventually. And the bottom piece. Okay, what holds that in? Oh yeah, it slides in like that. That's good. So that's fine. I thought some clips were broken there. And it looks like it's got plenty of grease in there anyway. So that part's okay. Now with all that out of the road, the suspension feels all right. It's on springs. So now we can just take the belt off the pulley and off the bottom pulley. Okay is a bit deformed, it looks shiny on the inside, it feels a bit hard, it's a square section belt, I wonder if I've got one. Well they feel okay. So I've just had a look through my little box of belts here and I can't find anything the same size, 
Um, and a lot of these are a bit old anyway and a little bit hard because they are just out of various units that I've scrapped. So there's a chance that most of those really shouldn't be put back in to uh, some sort of operational service. I think what I might do is have a look on eBay, buy a, a couple of packs of mixed belts. You can buy some mixed ones that give you a pretty good selection. Uh, this one, it does stretch, so it's not totally perished. But it seems a little shiny on one side. I think I might try some rubber in you and see if we can bring it back to life. And I'll clean the pulleys in case they've got any muck on them. There's a little bit oily around the end of the motor here. So I'll clean both the pulleys with some IPA. We'll treat this with some rubber in you and we'll see if we can get some action. Um, if I do sell the item on eBay or even in the shop, I might make a note that it probably needs a new uh, tray opening belt. So here's the rubber renew. It's fairly potent stuff. You need to use it in a well-ventilated area. I've got some gloves on. You can't be too careful with some of these chemicals. And this one has a list a mile long of, of uh, warnings on the back. So I'm just going to put a little bit on a tissue. We'll put the top back on so I'm not breathing any new fumes. And we'll just work it round and round this belt. And hopefully it brings some life back into it. The belt appears to be pretty stretchy now that I've moved it around a bit, but it does appear a little shiny on the surface and look at the black that's coming off it. So this stuff uh, does penetrate into the rubber and it kind of brings back its tackiness and its natural sort of rubbery type feel and any hard and shiny rubber, it should really help. That's certainly taking some stuff off. And it's quite good on pinch rollers and things and cassette players that have gone hard and shiny. It can certainly bring them back to life. I'm just going to do this for quite a while to give it a really good chance. And uh, then we'll just clean up the pulleys, as I mentioned before. With our belt now cleaned up, I'm going to wipe over these pulleys, as I suggested, just to make sure there's no oil or anything on them. And sometimes when belts start to break down, they will leave an oily film or a black um, oily mess sometimes as the belts completely dissolve. This one hasn't got to that stage, but I do want to make sure the pulleys are clean. I might have to get in there with a tissue. All right, doesn't look too bad. A uh, little bit of stuff, they don't look too bad. All right, let's put our rejuvenated belt back on there. It does feel a lot better, making sure we don't touch any greasy spots with it. We don't want to introduce any grease to the surfaces. Okay, that feels pretty good. The belt certainly feels tight enough. Hopefully that grips a lot better. All right, we just have to put it back together. So just sliding the tray back through here. And I've noticed that these stoppers, which normally stop against the back of the front panel, one of them's got a rubber cushion thing on it. The other one hasn't. So I don't know if that's missing or not. They're just a little rubber sleeve. I could probably cut one out of a little grommet. I guess it's supposed to have one that side. I didn't see one in the case anywhere. So, but I can access them very easy once it's together. Our belt looks like it's tracking nicely. So I think it's just a matter now of um, putting the front panel back on. The clips at the bottom and the screws at the top. That looks pretty good. Let's clip the front panel back on. Okay, those clips are in. Okay, that feels okay. The mechanism appears to work smoothly. We can put our top cover back over now. And our spring. There we go. Okay, before we put anything else together, let's power it up and see if it works better. Okay, are we ready? Open. Yeah, beautiful. Close. That's working very nicely now. That's great. 
All right, I reckon that belt's uh, much better than any other second-hand belt. The Rubber Renew really did a good job cleaning it up. It felt almost like a new belt. It should last, I think. It's a pretty good product, this. As I said, it's fairly potent, but it is really handy in some situations. I think I've got links for it from in my Amazon store. I'll put a link underneath this video if I can find it. And it's going to last you a lifetime. I assume it doesn't have a shelf life. I'm not sure, but obviously you wouldn't leave the top off. It's going to evaporate. It is poisonous, it's flammable, the whole bit, but in some cases it does an excellent job. I just cut down a little grommet, a nice soft rubber grommet, and even though it's not perfectly oval, it fits on that little tab nicely. So that's fixed that problem. Right, I think we can put the cover back on this and play some music. But just one more job to do before we play some CDs. Um, I've just re-glued the felt on these two. These are the back two, and the front two... I found some sort of sponge rubber uh, self-adhesive furniture feet or, or pads and I cut out the outside shape and then I thought what the hell I'm cut out the middle piece I might as well stick it back on so it makes quite a nice foot and it should sit flat because they're the same both sides so that's finished that I'll turn it up the other way and just let the I put some PVA glue in this these ones let that set and uh, we're good to go and doesn't that look magnificent? I've just cleaned it up with some general purpose cleaner and wiped it over with some armor oil. It absolutely looks sparkling new. So let's power it up. There's no CD in it at the moment. So open the door. Thank you very much. We'll put in our rock and roll number. I really, it's disappointing we can't play much of it. It's selecting 18 tracks, let's play. <laughs> And let's go through a few tracks quickly. In fact, track four is one of my favorite songs. Let's go. Stop. Oh, I hope we didn't play too much. Um, Johnny Be Good, great song to rock and roll dance to. Anyway, there we go. Successful CD repair, and it looks magnificent. Just a few scratches and scuffs on the top in fact you could probably touch them up if you were worried about the aesthetics but then again these things normally go in a stack like we've got here with maybe something else on top and you would never see it the front looks absolutely sparkling new and if anyone has disc two of the hawaiian love songs and wants disc one it's here for you uh, of course, that would have sounded a lot better with better speakers. We've only got those really tinny little surround sound speakers. They're probably only a, a mid-range speaker. But that's not the thing. The issue is, well, there's no issue now. We've fixed the Philips, vintage Philips CD player. What's it worth? I don't know. I didn't find any sales results. I'm thinking 75 to 100. You know, it's back enough that it's going to be a bit sought after by the people that like vintage hi-fi gear. Uh, I noticed it was made in Mexico. Um, the sticker underneath said that. Philips, you know, well-known brand. It seems to work very nicely. So I think it's worth around about that bracket. I might put it on eBay. I might put it in the shop. I'll work that out. In fact, I think I might do a, a video on all these other ones I've got here and we'll follow the eBay auctions and see how we go. If I get organized, I might include this one as well. But uh, in the meantime, something else out of my shed. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.